everybody, Chuck Dietz here and this is part two of my recording series. Now I'm not sure how many of you noticed, but I have a really messy basement. I got a studio computer here, then I have all these weights and microphones and the green screen here, then I have this random set of tools and kitty litter back there. And this time I just want to keep the focus right on the video, so I have hidden all of it. So I've read some of your comments before and it looks like some of your initial questions are what recording interfaces do I use and what kind of software do I use? Basically, how do I get my guitar from here in my hands into the computer? Basically, if you search the internet, you can find anything and everything about the topic. But to narrow it down, I'm going to talk a little bit about the approaches that I've taken from where I started to where I am now. And so, for that, whenever I first started doing YouTube videos, um, I did everything on my GNX4, which is the Digitech 4 processor. So it has a recording interface built right on it. And additionally, it has USB capabilities. It's got tons of different outputs. Whenever I'm recording, though, I focus mainly on the USB. This is the PreSonus FP10. Now this thing has eight inputs and several different outputs. And you'd want to use something like this if you're recording a full band, because whenever you record drums, you need to record a whole lot of tracks at the same time. You need overheads, bass, snare, toms, maybe some extra cymbals. But yeah, there's a lot to that. Now if you're just trying to do guitar videos, for YouTube or something, you could go with something smaller than this. Uh, PreSonus makes miniature versions. They have uh, recording interfaces with just one or two inputs, and that might suit your needs perfectly. And there's lots of different recording interfaces that you can use. PreSonus makes a whole lot of other ones. Um, I think Line 6 has some stuff, like the Pod is very popular with recording. I'm not sure if they record from the computer or to the pod, to the computer. I'm not really sure how that works. I just know that people do. I think there's also some other ways, like there's a program called Guitar Rig, and I think you can get something for that, that that'll go right between your guitar and computer. And if you're just recording guitars, that's pretty much all you need. Next, I'd like to go into recording interfaces, and there's three main ones that I've really used. So first, there was GarageBand. Now GarageBand was like my starting program. That was the first program that I used to get high quality recordings. And if you want to hear some of my older stuff that I did with it, you can listen to my original Let's Party or one of the old covers I did, Christmas Sarajevo. Now the version of GarageBand that I use is 09. So it's a little bit dated, but definitely still works. As for input and output, it's very easy. You can use built-in audio. Uh, you can also use one of these recording interfaces that we talked about. And I always use my GNX4. And what's really cool about GarageBand is that I'm able to use the built-in audio for output while still recording through the GNX4. Now the other two programs that I showed you, um, you might be able to do that, but I haven't figured out a way yet. As for programming instruments, GarageBand comes with tons of programmable instruments. You can use drums, strings, there's tons of synth effects, so you can go techno if you want. Um, as far as I've seen, there's no VST support. Now, for those of you that are unsure about what that means, uh, VST is a type of plugin. Um, there's a lot of open source plugins on the internet that I use. Additionally, a lot of the paid plugins are VST. Now, as far as plug and play capabilities, it's very easy. Like when I used my GNX4 with it, I just plugged it in. I didn't have to install anything. The latency was fine. But if you do need to lower the latency, you can just go into the options and select minimum delay when playing instruments live. And as for the interface, I think GarageBand is as simple as it gets. The second program I use is called Adobe Audition. Now, I have version CS5, and you probably don't want to go out and buy the entire Adobe Suite because that's like $3,000, unless you can get a student discount like I did, so I nabbed the whole thing for 500 bucks. But if you do decide to get Adobe Audition, um, by itself it's a couple hundred dollars, I think. 
In, as for input and output, you can use either the speakers or the recording interface, but I've not been able to use both at the same time like I have with GarageBand. So you need to have some sort of external speakers hooked up to your interface. It could be external speakers or maybe even an amp. As for programming instruments, there's no MIDI support in this program. So if you want drums, you want strings, you need to use other programs. Uh, for example, I think it's called Beatcraft. Uh, that's a very good one. As for plug and play abilities, you have to also install the drivers for whatever interface you're using. It's not as easy and as intuitive as Mac, but it's not too difficult either. And once you install your drivers, the latency is pretty low and you're good to go. As for the interface, it's moderately complex, but it has more bells and whistles. Like it has some plugins powered by Isotope, which is a very good mastering company. And it has all your basic EQs, compressors, maximizers, which you can find in all three of these programs. Last but not least is Sonar. We are using Sonar X1. We just upgraded from 8.5 and Sonar X1 is totally awesome. Now the input and output is pretty much the same as Audition where you need to either use an interface or your computer speakers, but not both. And we have that taken care of because we have, um, I have two external speakers that sit right above me. As for programming instruments, I do all my programming straight in Sonar. It has a bunch of soft synths which are strings, drums, um, just all kind of stuff. Synthesizers, sequencers, and they're all VST plugins. So I have, I have guitar VST plugins, like this is an open source one. These are LaPu plugins, I love them. And the interface is also pretty intricate. We've got the track view, I've got a mixing view, some clip views. You can also pull up a piano roll, which I don't have any synth in here, so I'm not gonna pull that up now, but it's in here. There's tons of plugins. It's got built-in EQs, compressors, and yeah, it's awesome. And that concludes part two. So I just wanna thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope I haven't rambled too much. I hope that you got some useful information out of this that you can take away or even if it just inspires you to go look up some other stuff look up some different recording interfaces look up some different recording programs there's a whole lot of stuff out there so as always if you have any questions send them to me I will either try to answer them or research them or just do a Google search because there's probably a lot of things that Google can answer better than I can but anyway Thank you, and I will see you next time.